Go, 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 go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Push it out there. Push it real good. Uh, <laughs> okay, we are live on YouTube. Let me oh, just let me, stop. To, let me go to YouTube. Let me just pull it up here. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. Uh, how do I get to that? Um, what, okay, what YouTube is it go. on? What YouTube is it on? We have a YouTube channel. That's okay. All right. Wait, it's on SVS or Children's Book Pro? Just wait okay. for everybody to get in here. Yeah, we are. We've got Duck down. 28 people watching now. So I think we're good. All right. Um, We've got... Sorry we were late. Uh, I just want to <laughs> I just want to say we thought we were doing this just on Zoom as a webinar and not doing it on um, YouTube and we forgot to like send the webinar through to YouTube so that you guys could all watch it here. So apologies for that. And uh, <laughs> we are excited to take some of your questions. Um, first things first, we got a, a few questions from the Discord. Uh, some of the people who are already signed up, uh, one of them couldn't couldn't make it, so we're just going to answer. Be, before some. you uh, go into that question, mm -hmm. are we excited about doing Children's Book Pro? Oh, dude, this is our <laughs> this is our dream. It's funny because like the the technic the technical stuff gets you yeah. all like into that like yeah. And then you go live and you're like not ready. Yeah, I'm getting. We I want to hook up a cord. I want to hook up a cord or something. Like can, <laughs> but now we have to get ready again. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So Let's do a guess, welcome to Children's Book Pro. Right. And do a little intro. Go ahead, Jake. That's your that's your domain. Okay. I'll do that. Before we get into questions, I just wanted to welcome you to Children's Book Pro. This is our uh our our fourth time running this course. Each time we run it, we get a little bit of feedback from um from the students and we adjust things and we make it a little bit better. So you guys are attending like the most refined version of this course, except for this particular webinar, <laughs> which, <laughs> which we just got our, our signals crossed on, on what we were doing today. But that said, uh, uh, one of the th reasons that we decided to do this course was, um, was essentially we saw this, we had this knowledge that wasn't being taught. And us three had to like kind of learn the art and the illustration and the business of children's books on our own. And we were dying for something like this. We were dying to be able to have a course like this that we could run through and go through. And and not, not only that, like, I think one of the biggest, nicest features of this is to have like a group of cohorts to kind of go through it with, with, with each other, that, that you have this discord that you can go in and ask a question and, and share work and see what other people are doing, kind of just be there with your, with your, um, you know, with your peers in this. So that's the whole like reason for us to do this. We're excited to run it again this, this time. We're excited for the people who've already signed up for it. Um, um, looking forward to talking to you guys weekly in our Zoom sessions and looking forward to seeing the like the amazing work that's going to come out of this out of this group. And if you're still on the fence and you're thinking about it, that's what today's for is to like answer any questions you might have to uh, to just help you understand what what you might be getting into. So we're gonna monitor the chat here and just kind of um, see what. Uh, see what questions we're going to get. Um, if you, I'm, I'm going to start at the top. We'll kind of work our way down through. We got a couple of questions from a, uh, someone who couldn't be here on the Discord uh, that we'll answer as well. But to make it easier to kind of see the questions, can you like in all caps, just put question, colon, and then your question, just so that as we scroll through, we can really like parse idea. them from, from comments. Mm -hmm. um, or you think okay, so the question and answer. I have a question that's always on everyone's mind. So can we start? Yeah, go for there. it. Question is, what is different about this course? There's a million children's books, classes out there and books and things like that. What makes this I wouldn't say different? there's a million, but 
Um, but there are, we, you know, when researching this course, we, you know, we Googled it, we looked, we researched some of it, and we saw that there was a handful of courses out there, some that look pretty reputable. Reputable? Is that the word? <laughs> reputable. It is, it is reputable. <laughs> but yeah, why this course? What what makes it different? You you tell us, Lee. Well, the other classes we did a deep dive because the first that was the first question we asked is why should we make a class? Um, you know, there's already enough information out there on this topic, and then we started looking at the classes, and they were terrible. I don't feel bad in saying that because. They're, they just barely scratch the surface of this topic. It, I mean, a lot of the classes we would see would have like, you know, two 15 minute lectures, design a character, and then, and then illustrate your book mm -hmm. and then good luck. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, if it was that easy, it would take, it would just be one, a one hour class. We have over, I mean, it's gotta be 40, 50, 60 hours of lecture. I mean, it is so nuanced because we wanted to get into how to tell a story. I can easily say, oh, design a character, put them in a story. Here's how you make a dummy. And, and now that's what they do at SCBWI as well. You have right. a one hour lecture in, and you're in, like, okay, you feel like you can do it, but you can't. You know, there's a million things that, you, that you're going to have that's going to pop up when you just start drawing. And we dove into all that stuff. How do you tell a story? How do you speed up a story? How do you slow down a story? How right. do you make a moment more dramatic? How do you make a moment more quiet or loud? I mean, we really get into the nuances of making a story. Well, and breaking down each principle. And um, we went before SVS, I was doing a, a, a different um, online tutorial company called Folio Academy. And we hired someone who was highly recommended to do a, um, a children's book class. And um, she's a great writer. And she basically said, um, these are the books that I've done. These are the, my favorite books and, you know, the, uh, from other authors and go write a good story, you know? So go out. And that was the, that was the conclusion was, so go write a good story. And there was no breakdown on how to do it. Like <laughs> you start with a blank piece of paper. What do you do first? What do you do second? What do you do third? We, we have separated those out into chapters with segmented videos on what to do first, what to do second, what to do third, all the way up to how many steps would you say? And if you broke everything down, mm -hmm. 50, 60, 70 steps. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. But we even we even have this nice map that kind of shows you from idea to publication and everything in between and how you can overlap and work on sort of the most efficient way to finish a children's book when you're waiting for feedback from an editor, what do you work on? Instead of just twiddling your thumbs, what can you start advancing on that's going to help you, you know, not uh, run out of time at the end. So there's, there's a whole practical application side of it. There's the artistic side of it. There's the business side of it. This course covers everything. So that's, that's, uh, that's one of those things where you're like, if you see something that you can do that no one's doing it's almost like uh you're called to do it like you know it, it'd be irresponsible not to do <laughs> not to do it and that's that's sort of how we felt um okay so let's let's get down to some of the questions um I, i'm gonna go to the first one from john stewart um the talk show host glad to have him here <laughs> celebrity guest he says, do you talk about agents versus freelance? That always comes up. I mean, during the weekly sessions, that's not in our course content per se, but that's why we're doing the Zoom sessions weekly. And we get a ton of questions like that that are very specific and nuanced on getting agents and when to work with an agent and pros mm -hmm. and cons of having an agent or not having an agent. So you can ask us any of that stuff. I mean, we've done so many books uh, between the three of us. We've all had agents. I've had, I'm on my fourth agent right now. So I've got a lot of opinions about that. When to keep an agent, when to leave an agent. Um, so you're going to be, we're definitely going to go over that stuff. Yep. Question number two from Iris. When are the Zoom meetings usually? I work full time, so I don't know if it matters whether I can make the weekly meetings or not. So. The Zoom meetings are uh, every Thursday 
and the the odd weeks they're going to be in the evenings and the even weeks they're going to be in the mornings so um the evening we're, we're doing it at um uh i think it's 11 a.m pacific time and 6 p.m pacific time depending on if you can do the evening or the or the morning one mm -hmm. um and we'll have two of us there at each of the at each of the sessions so it'll be me and will for the mornings lee and david hone another children's book illustrator for the evening ones and every one of these zoom meetings is recorded so if you do miss it you can watch them later and if you know mm -hmm. you're not going to be there you can post your question for it in the discord mm -hmm. and we'll get to that question so if you're working totally we're trying to make this as easy as possible for people who are barely able to fit a course like this into their schedule anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but that is a big part of it is getting your questions answered. I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So Sarah says, how many students are you taking? We don't put a, a cap on how many students, because this isn't a, um, a one-on-one -on -one teacher to student type of course. What it is, is we, uh, it's almost like a, a go at your own pace course, even though we run it in 10 weeks. That's when these 10 weeks are when you have access to us for questions. Um, we're going to be looking at artwork that's posted in the Discord. We're, we're going to be giving general feedback uh, for what we see is, uh, people straying. And some students, we might even um, pull your work out and say, here's a few things I think we you could fix, especially if it's something that by showing how to fix your work will help many students. So that's the type of course it is for it to be like um, you know, a very one to one uh, us working hand in hand with you on your work. Um, it would require way more time on our part and would cost way more. And we're trying to find that nice balance between how do we serve as many people as possible without um, essentially wrecking our schedules, you know, our illustration career schedules to, to teach this class because we're all working illustrators and we're just trying to find that balance. And I think what we've landed on here based on the feedback we've been getting from the previous classes is that this kind of works the best uh, uh, for everyone. Um, Jamie, yeah, and, and to that question, oh, did you want to add to that? Well, I don't know if you want to go to Jamie's question, but it seems like it would fit in right now. With okay. what you're talking about and she's saying um during the course if we have specific questions about our works in progress are we able to ask one of you directly and get feedback so what we have in the if you put it in the discord and ask for general help for, then other people will chime in and like jake said we can pull that art and use it in our q a session and a lot of times we start the q a with um images that we've pulled out and maybe done a little draw over on or something if it looks like it's something that could help the group but again we don't do that with everybody but it's just kind of what we think we can help the most with that that particular session mm -hmm. so you can definitely put it in the discord and a lot of people have found that through the the other um the other sections of this class that we've run in the past is that they've de developed um strong friendships with people that will help each other critique the work. And so that's, it's really valuable for that too. You'll make connections in this class. Yep. Um, okay. This comes from holes. We can do this in our own time, right? It's hard committing to a certain amount of hours per week when working full time. So you have access to this course um, forever. This is like, this is, this is, we actually recommend people not doing this course once, but going through these videos more than one time. So if you, uh, you know, if you finish it and your first pass at this is just watching the videos and kind of just absorbing it, then your next pass would be, okay, now I'm gonna do all the homework assignments. Um, uh, you know, your third pass might be, now I'm gonna try it with one of the other uh, mm -hmm. manuscripts because there's three manuscripts you can choose from. Uh, and so, you know, if you, if you wanna spread it out or if you wanna, condense it and do as many times in a year that you want to do. It's all up to you. The, you just have a window of 10 weeks where you have zoom access to us. And that's something you should, you should keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, 
devoted mom there's... of seven. I like like that name. That's a lot of kids. So congratulations. She said, "I've signed up for the course, but not received any details, such as uh, the Discord group." And there might. And we've be already we've already been uh, writing her in the chat. You got that so figured don't worry out about that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If yeah, yes. if you have, but let's go ahead and say to anyone, if you've signed up and you haven't gotten. Uh, details on any of it, whether it's the Discord or what's going on or you know how to access anything, uh, go ahead and email lisa at svslearn.com. I've written that in the uh, chat as well. And she will help you get you sorted out. So it's, it shouldn't be a problem. It's typically just a, a link or an email or something that we got to send. And so don't worry about that. But yeah, go ahead and email her if you're having any problems. Um, I would like to address that I've seen a couple of different versions of this question. Uh, some people asking, will we be able to uh, look at everyone's work or is, is there a time where, that we're going to be available to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring? Um, that's a tricky one. And I want to be really honest about it because uh, we've tried in the past. The problem with true mentoring with a children's book manuscript is we'd almost have to do it. Well, we'd almost have to quit our jobs. I mean, it would, and it would cost like $6,000 for you guys, because the second you change one page, we then have to go through all 32 pages and adjust everything accordingly. Mm -hmm. And so they're just, they're, it's a massive effort to, for a teacher to like, you can get feedback, go to a SCBWI conference and say, Oh, review my dummy. You're going to get a five minute crit it's not a real review. It's not really going to solve the problems in narrative and storytelling. And so that's just the problem we haven't been able to solve yet. Um, we mm -hmm. would love to look at everybody's dummies and walk you guys through it, but it is such an intensely detailed and personal experience per manuscript that we just haven't figured out the formula to do that. And so we it's not like we don't want to. We didn't want to do it and have people feel like we didn't, like we charged a bunch of money and didn't do it right. And, and we just couldn't make it work. Yeah. I want to say too, in working with editors, this is essentially the job of an editor as well is, is you turn in a manuscript or an agent, they'll do this as well. They look over it, they give you feedback. And for them, that's like, that is their job to work with you on that, on that manuscript. But I think about the amount of time my editors put in with me on any one particular book. Like, I'm glad that they're getting a full-time salary from from the publisher to be able to do that, um, you know, and uh, and so yeah, like Lee said, it's and, and Will were saying it's it's not feasible for us to do at this time. So which is why we are offering essentially a way for us to download as much information that we can into your brains, answer any questions that you have, and then uh, uh, with access to the SVS fundamentals, get your other fundamental drawing and, and illustration abilities on their way. And then, uh, and then kind of go from there. Um, uh, so that's, that's, that's where we're at with that. Let's answer uh, some really quickly. You think we can? Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of questions. Like, okay. We're on Sarah one, one from Sarah right here. Yeah. She's halfway through fundamentals at SVS learn. And should she wait to finish that before taking this class? I don't think you need to. Um, if you're halfway through, you, you're, you're, I would say if you're less than halfway through, it might be a little difficult. Some of the things, but if you're halfway through, you're, you're in a good spot. I, I, and, I'm going to, uh, let me elaborate on that one a little bit. Cause there's, we always get different versions of this question, whether it's on the beginner side and do, do I have enough experience to take the class or the other side of it is I'm a pro. Do I need it? And so this class, that's why this class I think is so good is that we, it really does hit wherever you are, you'll be able to use it, but it's going to land in different ways. If you're a pro already and you're already doing books and you take this class, you're going to be able to grab some of those tips and tricks that we're talking about and techniques and be able to just implement them immediately right on your store. You already have the experience to do that. On the beginner side of it, that's what Jake was saying. You know, we recommend you take this class multiple times because maybe you're drawing isn't a uh, skill isn't there all the way, but you're going to start to understand these story style, storytelling concepts, these narrative concepts, how to, you're going to understand how to start to lay it out, but it's going to take a little while for it to truly sink in and then show up in your work. So it might not be as immediate for a beginner as mm -hmm. it is a pro, but I mean, there's a huge difference between taking somebody else had asked, well, I'm taking the regular SVS classes. Is that, isn't that enough? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, because it, like we're teaching technique there 
um, but we're not teaching how to put it all together, how to make it work mm -hmm. for your story. And, uh, and that's a whole different thing. That's exactly what, why we needed to build this class instead of just sticking with the SVS classes. It, the other thing, this is us answering really quickly, <laughs> but the other thing is it, it takes a long time. Like our, we, we've all talked about this, our first books, we wouldn't make any of the decisions that we made on our first books that we're making on the books that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We've, and, and so there's an evolution that's going to happen in your work. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, like you, you're not going to take, you're not going to finish the, the fundamentals and just be ready to dive right in uh, to making the best books you've ever made. It's going to be practice doing book after book after book, sometimes years of, of practicing this to get good enough. And so, um, so yeah, I, I think it's, I think it would be great to start if you're halfway through the fundamentals. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see if we can do this question in five words or less. I can't do the course this time around due to work commitments. You said this was the fourth time. So does that mean you'll be running it again next year? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. One word. All right. Can you tell <laughs> probably, us what fairy probably tales... in the probably in the um, winter? Yeah. We're trying to do it. Yeah. We're trying to do like a, a fall and a winter spring kind of a thing a fall so, in the spring right yeah I, I should add you know we, we talked about you having access to the class forever you also have access to the discord forever somebody was asking about what is discord it's sort of a social uh area of the site where you can chat it's where you're going to upload some of your homework images uh and so you can always go over there you're always going to have access to it and a lot of our students from previous terms are still chatting still uploading new work hey what do you think about this cover and all that stuff so you are are always going to have access to that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Corey wants to know what are the fairy tales that we use for the manuscripts? In the oh, course? the manuscript question. This is a, we're not going to be able to answer this in five, five words. Well, Go ahead. Well, well, no, but the story she's what fairy tales, the manuscripts are based off of the ones we chose. We Those have three of them. Yeah. We have three, three manuscripts. So they're, they're just the basic, uh, we had a professional writers, uh, condense these stories so they're a little bit more manageable in terms of word size but it's Hansel and Gretel uh, Jack and the Beanstalk Jack and the Beanstalk and Little Red Riding Hood Little Red Riding Hood Three That's Little right. Bears <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Red I've Riding Hood I've been writing all day stories and so I've just got all these different stories mm -hmm. in my head um, yeah and so we get a lot of questions can I illustrate my own manuscript um, are you going to change the manuscripts each time we don't, if you've already gone through the class, because we do have a couple of alumni in the chat. Um, if you're going to take the class again, don't, um, don't do one of the stock ones this time. Maybe uh, either find another manuscript um, or that you're actually interested in or write your own. I uh, wouldn't recommend doing ours unless there's some principle that you need to learn. But we've yeah. made these manuscripts not for you to submit to publishers, but we made them for as a template for you to just be able to follow along, try some of the stuff out that we're talking about without getting too specific into your own story, it does not mean we don't want you to write and illustrate your own story. We mm -hmm. do want you to do that. It's just, mm -hmm. we want you to, it's sort of a, just a practice test. You know what I mean? Just to, yeah. just to work through the exercises and they're basic stories. You don't have to overthink these stories. You don't have to rewrite them in a more creative way. And matter of fact, we do a couple of demos in the class. Like here's how I would illustrate this page from Little Red Riding Hood. We don't rewrite the entire story or anything like that. We just illustrate what's on the, what's written and we show you different ways to illustrate it. The reason, I just want to go into real quick why we did it this way. Yep. You can use your own manuscript. You're perfectly free to do that. We suggest that if you're not really good at writing that and, and have a polished story ready to go, for this class that you use one of our manuscripts because the stories are proven they're reduced down to their um their essence and um it, all you have to do is is worry about the illustration part if you use your own story and you're you know you're getting help from people in the discord or you're showing it to us and uh or or anyone and they say well here's a kind of a problem with your story it's going to wreck everything that you've all the work you've done through your book dummy it's going to wreck all of your illustrations and it's going to create a nightmare work there one of the biggest problems that illustrators get into is they start illustrating because that's what we love to do um, before the story is completely polished and the only way you know your story is completely polished is if you're already 
kind of pro at writing or you've been workshopping your story in critique groups for quite a while and you've reduced it down and edited it down and 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 got it there so it i mean i've started i personally i i started 10 stories 10 or 12 stories um illustrating them too soon and had to kind of either abandon the project or put it on hold and and or you know, do after doing a bunch of reworking and it's just it's what we do we want to we we want to illustrate and um so that's 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 the purpose for that um this comes in from ray if you're wanting to get into young adult graphic novels or comics rather than children's books do the concepts in this course still apply yes they do uh comics there's i want to do a graphic novel course in the next couple of years and and that one will be just as in depth as this one. And there's some very specific storytelling uh, principles that apply to comics that that are more base level for children's books. But how to manage your project, how to um, figure out your characters, how to figure out your um, sort of like the the style and the colors and all of this sort of ground level stuff that you need for a children's book also works for for comics environment so, design all that yeah. good stuff yeah. i kind of feel like if you can do children's books you can do if you can do graphic novels you can do children's books well i don't know, when if, you, you can, I don't when know you, if it works the other way but when you make that course i couldn't do a graphic novel <laughs> you'll have to basically cannibalize this course i would imagine for 60 to 70 percent of the content uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there's some things that apply to it, but it is not by no means a comics course. So don't go into it thinking it's a one to one. Like ah, I can apply this exactly, but there are principles that that, that cross over. Uh, okay, next question. Where are we at? Um. Well, we've answered Emma's kind of, um, we're, we're going to run the class again. How about owls? What drawing skills yeah. and tools will be needed? It's basic drawing tools. Yeah. <laughs> Paper and pencil, um, maybe a sketchbook. You, Photoshop's you know, you, fine. Yeah. If you want to use, um, if you're an Adobe person, want to use InDesign and, and Photoshop, things like that. But everybody can use different tools. Um, the tools that they're comfortable with. And some people like to stay really analog mm -hmm. and just work on paper and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. This isn't a, uh, you're, you're not going to, I mean, if you are totally a, a, a crazy person and in 10 weeks you want to have a finished children's books, children's book, you're going to want to have access to all the supplies that you're going to need for that. But by the end of this course, you'll have, a finished illustration or two, um, a finished book dummy, a character design for your, or multiple character designs for your characters. So you figure out what medium you like to work in and that's what you're going to need to, to finish some of the assignments in this course. No one um, ever finishes this course in 10 weeks. I should add that we don't have an expectation that you're going to be done with this like a, like a normal college class, right? You go to college or you go to class on week one, you know, by week, whatever, 10 or 11, you put up your final work and then you walk out and you're finished with the class. No way you're going to keep, there's so much information here that by week eight, you're probably already going to be behind. Um, and so our job was just to give all the information out there and, and, you know, you're going to watch the videos, but to think you're yeah. going to do a, a finished dummy in this amount of time, especially when we don't start the dummy until week, uh, what, five, Mm -hmm. six or something like that. Um, so just plan accordingly. Don't stress yourself out. Like, Oh my gosh, I don't have enough to, how much time is it going to take? Am I going to be bogged down each week? Not at all. Um, it just get in there, watch the videos, definitely make plans, uh, uh, to a lot time to watch the videos, but you know, you're not going to finish a whole dummy during this time. So, so don't and stress too much about the time. And yeah. I would say that there, in a lot of ways, this is there's, well, I know there's more content and more, more to get through than when I was teaching how to illustrate a children's book in college at, at, at UVU. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, you show up to class and you, 
when, when you're a teacher, you just don't organize like we did for this. We, the three of us put our heads together and we exhausted every possible topic um, and basically wrote essentially a book in video form, <laughs> and, right. uh, an outline that was massive. And teachers just don't do that. They rely on someone else's text or they just wing it. And most illustration teachers in art schools and colleges, they rely on their knowledge of what they've done. So they basically answer questions, they give assignments and people work on their assignments and they critique them, but they don't give the instruction like this because there's just, there's, there's just not the, the incentive to do something like this in the, in the school setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, what is unique again about this course is that, you know, as we, Jake, Will, and I all, each of us did every assignment in there. And so it was fascinating to watch, you know, Will design a character and it was totally different than how I designed a character, which was totally different than how Jake designs a character, but there was overlaps. And so we talk about yeah. where those things overlap for all three of us and will probably overlap for your skill set as well. And then where we're sort of different. And, you know, some, some people may lean towards how Jake does it. And some people are going to lean towards how Will does it. You'll never get that from a normal class right. with a single instructor. And that was the big shocking part to us is we thought we had it all figured out. We've done so many books, like I said earlier, between us. And then while these guys are drawn, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I just would have known that, I would have mm-hmm. saved me years, <laughs> you know, on <laughs> right. some of these projects. Well, and and one of my favorite parts of this course is when the three of us do the three little pigs. Um, we we take a three little pigs manuscript and without any of us talking to each other, we all went and did our version of the three little pigs. We did a, a book dummy for it. And then we showed you how three different illustrators solved this problem three different ways. And what's fascinating is seeing where we all kind of did the same thing and where we diverged. Like, like it's just really cool. And that, that lecture might be worth the admission to the course right there. So mm-hmm. Um, um, okay. So then party create says, um, is there a focus on writing, illustrating through self-publishing? Our class is really, um, designed for traditional publishing. And we talk mostly about that, but all the, everything that we, um, teach as far as creating a children's book is applicable to both. So, um, the only thing that we're not doing is walking you through the self-publishing landscape in this course, um, because there's so many ways to self-publish. Um, and we, we just decided not to focus on that in this. Course. Mm-hmm. All right. We're, where are we at now? Do we have access to the discord after the 10 week? I think we answered that one. Yes, you do. Um, is it the same manuscripts as previous courses? Yes. We haven't switched out the manuscripts. So if you are thinking of taking this again, you're going to have access to the, the really the only thing different this time will be the new um, uh, other than some of the other little modifications we've made. Um, there's going to be the, the zoom sessions. There's, there's always going to be different stuff that we go over in our, in our live, the live part. Um, how is this course different to the SVS learn classes and the podcasts? What will we be learning that we can't with SVS? That's a juicy question. Um I, I think Lee kind of skimmed over that one a little bit, but essentially, um, here's a here's a good analogy. Um, the fundamentals is going to teach you. Here's how you build a wheel. Here's how you build a dashboard. Here's how you build a windshield. Right, and they're all very, you know, compartmentalized sort of things. This course says here's how you build a car. You grab these wheels and you're going to put, you know, build this chassis first, and you're going to want to stick this engine in the front. And, you know, the exhaust system is going to go through here. And here's how you keep this whole production on schedule so that you can finish it in a, in a certain way. And here's how you sell this car to someone who's going to want to buy it. Like it's, it's taking all these individual people. We're not going to spend time on how do you design a wheel. We're not going to spend on time on how you do a windshield. We're going to say, take that windshield that you've already designed and you already know how to do, and you're going to slap it on here at this stage of production. That's essentially what this course is. Good analogy. I like that. Yeah. Uh, the business model is tricky. You guys have put together so many awesome resources. Thank you, Emma. 
Um, Martha says, I recommend getting the weekly assignments uploaded before the weekly group Zoom class. You have a good chance of getting feedback drawers done then. Not everyone turned in work on time. And I should say one other strategy, the opposite strategy of that we saw is people would wait to do the homework until after the Zoom session and seeing the feedback that other people were getting on theirs so that they could kind of learn from mistakes and and Instead not, of making like, them and getting that feedback. Yeah. And both have value. It Both have value in doing something and then finding out maybe you didn't do it right. And mm -hmm. As well as waiting. And yeah, someone asked, I don't know if we answered this. Um, we have access to the discord after the 10 weeks. And the answer to that is yes. Did we already answer that? Three yeah, times yeah. now. Okay. Each one of us have. All right. I must have been. <laughs> you're, you're, you're reading. Um, all, all uh, on that same note, we are, start, we are getting some uh, questions from people who have taken the class before and they were asking if they can attend the new Zoom sessions. Um, not sure about that. We will let you guys know in your own individual Discord group if we're gonna allow that. We haven't in the past because we wanted to keep it very specific to the new group each Zoom session. Um, but let me, uh, we'll talk about it and get back to you guys within the individual Discord. So check your Discord announcements uh, later. And, and if we're gonna do that, we'll let you know. Um, I like this question from Creative Vandal. I've been a tattooist illustrator for 23 years, so definitely need to change my style of drawing for the children's book. Does the course cover how to change style and what art works best? We do go into style and we talk lot, about yeah. sort of the state of the industry uh, as it, as, there's a, a lecture I do on book covers, which um, cover like covers, <laughs> which shows just the range of of what a book cover accomplishes and what it and, and what it needs to do and all the different styles that go into it. When we get into character design, we talk about the different versions of characters that you might want to put in a book style wise. So we do go into that. And if absolutely if you you know if you're a, a tattoo artist, that's a very specific style, but I haven't seen too many children's books that do that tattoo style. It might be interesting to see if there's a way to like combine the two into something, make something yeah. really unique. I've got a really specific lecture on how to stylize for children's books. Mm -hmm. And it it covers the because a lot of people are coming from different areas trying to draw for kids. Maybe they drew realistically before and having trouble stylizing. And I go to a pretty in-depth lecture on how to do that um, and make mm -hmm. it for for kids, if that's maybe your specific concern mm -hmm. there. Um any success stories from ex students getting a book deal after taking the class? So we are really bad at follow, following up with uh, with people, but people have reached out and said, "Absolutely, the stuff you've taught me was a game changer for me." Got I me got work. an agent. Yeah. I got a book deal. Um, it's been so quite, many at this few. point, and I might say, I don't know if you guys want me to talk about this. We were talking about this ahead of time, but I'm going to do it anyway. We've had quite a few students that have gone on to be very successful in in the freelance um, illustration business and also in children's books. And they won't, they don't want their name associated with SVS only for the fact that they think that we lack. Um, We're not Harvard. Panache. We, we lack, yeah, we We're lack. We're not a traditional uh, art school. We don't have the, you know, well, you went to art center and this, the shame in that is it, it, it actually hurts a little bit to hear that because we're like working really hard to make this. We worked some, with we some can. of these students one on one for years. Well, I, and and I mentioned <laughs> I mentioned four students before class who said, "Thank you so much for all that you've done for me." And I, because we asked them to share when they got a book deal and stuff. Yeah. And they're like, "Here's the thing, I don't want my clients to know that I didn't go to a." a full-time art school and, yeah four you know, year i don't have a four-year four year degree in yeah. art that i just took a uh you know a 10-week course they, at a <laughs> the sad thing is they're so new they don't realize that that's not going to matter to a client mm -mm. but these have a lot of the, these four students that i'm thinking of in particular have been we've, we've worked with them so closely and you know we we don't want to we're, we're not going to yeah. push back on that that's a request they made that's so their, interesting. That's their prerogative. It's something that surprised me. I never thought we that would be a, a problem for us, but we've made this so affordable 
when you compare it to art school, that um, that's a thing for some people. Right. Maybe that'll change over time. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of how like time. trade schools have not as much cachet as, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Southern California University of Art or whatever <laughs> schools over there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I like this question. Is this course, this is from Maureen, geared towards those who want to be an author illustrator versus just an illustrator. So we don't get into the writing side of it. This is very much focused on the illustration side. And um, and though we have author illustrated books, we do have that perspective and that angle. So if you are an illustrator who also wants to write your own stories, you just you're going to get something from this, obviously. Um, but we don't get into story structure per se and character development and, you know, all those kind of things that are very much spe specific to the author side of it. What we're doing is how do you tell a story visually? You know, how do you take what this character is feeling from the words and what can you put on the page that isn't written in the words that still tells the story? So we get in very deep into that. Um, and, and, so that and so definitely like, geared towards illustration uh we're we're trying to crack that nut of how do we teach the author side of it you know do we find an author do we you know i don't feel like we're fully qualified to do the author side of it just because we are illustrators primarily um but that's something we're trying to figure out in the future because ideally we want to be like the one-stop shop for people who want to do everything related to publishing uh, okay. I, and I just want to say thank you to everybody in the chat who's shout, giving us a shout out and saying, you know, you know this, is, this is a good class to take. We really do appreciate it. Uh, would the course be applicable for a 3D artist or is it more suited to painters and illustrators? Uh, if you work in 3D art, I see a future for you in children's books just because it's such a unique, unique yep. style. So the problem with... Um, people who know 3d art is like you can teach anybody how to use an art tool. Like I, you could teach a monkey how to use Photoshop. You <laughs> could teach, you know, a, a, a hyena how to do blender. Right. But you can't teach them how to craft a beautiful story that sort of has, that's where the art comes from. And so what our, what we're doing is you bring your art style we'll show you the storytelling style. And then through that alchemy, you become, you know, your, your storytelling abilities will shine through. Right. Um, we just want to give you the best leg up we can to being able to do that. Mm -hmm. You're uh, doing great, Jake. Keep going. Sorry. I keep talking. <laughs> I know. You, you, you guys take a break. I mean, you guys, uh, I'll take a break. You guys go for it. <laughs> Uh, um, so the, I guess the next one is I heard you guys were talking about clients. Does the class talk about clients you should avoid? Um, we, Not specific clients, but situations. But situations, sure. yeah, yeah. We we do talk about the business side um, in this class for sure. Um, the thing about this class and and our Zoom sessions as well is that we will give you the real answers. That you know, some people come into children's books and think it's just all you know butterflies and puppies and there's a downside to it as well there's always a negative and we're never going to say oh this industry is great and there's nothing wrong with it i'll tell you exactly i mean like I've, i did a picture book where i got a, uh, uh i had submitted the dummy and the notes i got back there were notes on it was like a novel on every page on what i needed to change mm -hmm. and i was furious i remember writing jake and will saying ah, i'm so mad i don't want to make all these changes so what do you do in that situation and we're going to talk about those realities. How do you keep the things that you want? You're going to have to change some things. So which one should they be? Yeah. But we're never going to candy coat it. We'll tell you, Hey, that we think that's a good deal. We think it, this part over here is not a good deal. Don't do avoid that if you can, but we'll always be straight up. Here's one from, I, I'm going to butcher the name Uger maybe, or Uger um, from uh, hello. I live in Turkey. And basically this, this uh, person wants to know if they can send us a question um, through email, if we'll answer it during the lesson. And yes, we will. If, if, if you can send us a question in English, then we'd be happy to answer that. And you can translate it 
uh, back into your language. Um, and the way to ask that question would be in the discord. So not, not through email, but, but getting, um, you know, if you sign up for the class, you'll get the information that will get you to, uh, to log into the discord. And then you can ask your questions in there. And then, uh, during the Q and a sessions, we'll, we'll answer those for sure. Well, we should, we should point out that it is not, uh, we don't have subtitles. And so if that's, if understanding that lectures is a problem just from the lecture and not reading it, um, I just want to point that out. I don't that's want anybody good, to think that's a good point. The, the, the lectures are in English. Yeah. The video, the videos, uh, and that, and this class relies on those videos. So if you, if you have some way of translating the, the, um, sound file, then you, you're good to go. Um, I haven't been listening to you guys. I've just been reading the chat and responding. So I don't know where we are now. I'll just pick a question. I would say, um, how about uh, this? Does your book, is your book a good complement to the course? Well, you're ha what they don't teach you at art school. Yeah, it is. It, it is for the business side. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and for anyone um, listening that you can look on Amazon now and it's uh, I'll put in the chat. I was telling Will he should make a, a sequel book called What They Do Teach You at Art School. And then he can just have between the two books, the combined knowledge of all humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Will, uh, did you know that what you don't teach in art school is a, is a medical book on how to not only like anatomy and physiology and, and surgery, but also law, um, uh, engineering. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Gene asked a question in terms of sharing your work in discord is getting a private scanner, a good idea. Um, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what well, that is either. A, a scanner. She's asking, should she have a scanner? Oh, your per, like a personal scanner, a personal scanner. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I thought a private scanner is like a, you know, private like, detective, <laughs> like someone who well, like it was like, I was thinking like, it's uh, encrypted. What are you guys somehow, talking about? You know? Encrypted. Scanner. I was like going no. real techie. I'm like, what is that? No, no, no. I think Ooh, she's no. just asking, should she have a scanner? If you're going to be drawing on paper, um, probably a scanner is going to be a good idea. Um, you can uh, take photos with your phone if you can get a good enough. A lot of this class is sketch based. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not finished paintings or anything like that. And so, mm -hmm. As long as you can shoot it. Um, yeah. I mean, like you can, there's lots of ways to do things. If you're working analog, you can, you can, if you can take a good picture of what you're drawing on your phone, you could upload that to the discord. You know, the, as long as we can see it really well, it's a good exposure. Um, we could talk about the work. There's not a, there's not a formatting. We're not format Nazis. We're not, you know, we're not going to be like, you didn't submit it the right way. So we're not talking about this. We just have to be able to see it, you know, right. And be able to get in there. Yeah. That said, I'll, if you're going to be an artist, getting a scanner is not a bad idea. Um, they're cheap. So. Yeah. Unless yeah. you get that one that's right there. Don't get that one. <laughs> that's a large format Epson that I had to exchange a child. One of my, ch I used to have six <laughs> children. Now I have five. Um, so Alice says, Will graduates get a t-shirt and a hat with the Children's Book Pro logo and teacher signatures? No, but you will get a full track suit. Um, <laughs> it's got rabbit ears. <laughs> it's got rabbit ears. Maybe a bunny suit. No, we don't we don't do merch right now. We could keep talking about it, but it's we just want like, to. We just said there's so many things on our plate. Um, Sarah's I'm, asking just to add to that scanner thing. She's asking uh, if we have a good one. I, I used one that was from like an office supply store. I do recommend getting 11 by 17 one. Don't get the eight by 10. Uh, but I think I paid like $125 for it. It was made by brother was the company, but it was, I mean, you could have gotten any of them there as long as it gets the information in. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, it did, it did great work and I used it for years. Mm -hmm. um, Ken has a question here. This court, is this course different than the illustrating children's book course on the SVS subscription? Yeah, it really is. We, that this is another thing. And, uh, you know, I don't like, I, I'm not in the habit of tooting our own horn, tooting my own horn, our own horn, mm -hmm. but Jake and I exhausted our, our knowledge at the time when mm -hmm. we created that class. And that we, class is and that, from 
2013. Yeah, that, that class is almost 10 years old. Yeah. But it's still a really good course. And it still has way more than I taught when I when I was teaching in college on how to illustrate a children's book. It's way more complete than that. And we broke that down and found probably 20 holes in that course that mm -hmm. maybe maybe 20 or 30 things that weren't in there because that was basically my outline that I kind of inflicted on Jake mm -hmm. for, for that class, the old one. Um, so there, there will be crossover. There will be a lot of stuff in this course that we also taught in that course, but there's also, there's a lot of new stuff. I, I, Speaking of tooting your own horn, I will say the video uh, and the audio on that class are, are pretty janky, right? Cause it's, it was older. Well, it was a we two hour video dumps. So if you want to go back and find something, right. It's not it's just hard. Chapters. And that's why but, we did this one. Yeah. But um, I did a demo in that class that I am so proud of. It was, remember, it was on point of view. Like, how do you pick the right point of view? And there was this thing where we set up this story, like a kid uh, left for school and he forgot his lunch. And so his pet, like parrot is like flying to with the lunch in, oh, that was really in cool. her beak yeah. to like give it to the kid. And I drew that from like five different angles to show you how many different ways you could, you could do this illustration. There isn't just one solution and there's little gold nuggets all through there. So if you, you know, if you want to go through that, you can, but like Will said, it's old. Um, it has holes in it and we filled all the, those holes with, with children's book pro. And this is just much better structured and it's easier to get the information in this one. So. There you go. So, Ru, I'm going to butcher this name. R Rumani Ru, uh, says, someone that took the course before, can they join into the Zoom sessions and Discord on this one? I already answered that one, but we're going to get, we're going to let, yeah, we'll let people know that yeah. in their own Discord. We're not totally sure. I what's just the, not that, yeah. tune you out so I don't hear your <laughs> answers. Iris wants to know what's the cutoff date for signing up for this class? And what is it next Thursday, next Tuesday? That's a question for the powers that be. Uh, let me ask our people in charge. We, I we want you guys to know. We don't know great, what's going on. We're great teachers. We're horrible <laughs> business people. So no, we're not horrible business people. We just don't get the information from our people all yeah. the time. Well, we, maybe we do. We just don't pay attention. I don't know. <laughs> well, We've, we're all writing. We're illustrating. I mean, that should give you confidence in us. Actually, yeah. we're working. I mean, that's what we're focused on is yeah. making images just like you're, you are. You're not taking a course from grifters like this. <laughs> While you're or getting people, that or it. people or more importantly, people that worked in the field 10 years ago who don't work anymore. Um, right. I mean, you get that a lot and it's oh. it, things change and stories change and technology changes. Yeah. Um, it's uh, September 11 is the last day to sign up. Yep. What on time? Sunday. Um, and, and I will say too, um, going, going back to that, if, if you have, you know, sticker shock, like, or, or it's just out of your budget, we do have an option where you can pay for it in three installments. Three, so, I think they're called three easy payments, three easy payments. So that was another <laughs> feedback that we got from people. They're like, I really want to take it. Money's tight right now. Is there any way we can do payments? And, uh, and so we're doing that now. That's an option now for people that they can, they can pay, uh, pay in three payments. So, so party create says I'm confused on the schedule for the class Do the class times go back and forth between morning and evening each week. Um, so the, those, yes, those sessions, those Q and a sessions do, um, one week they're in the morning, one week they're in the evening and so on and so forth. Let, let me be very specific. Session one, all four of us are going to be, us three and David Hone are going to be there. Session two, uh, it's going to be me and Will in the morning. And the session one's going to be in the evening. And this is courses we're talking in the U.S. So yeah, because people could be all. So all it's going to be midnight in France or whatever. I don't know. Well, that's Session why we did it though, is because the different time frames. Right. Are we using Pacific Standard Time on these times? That, yeah. That's what what time we're in. I don't. Know. Lisa, whenever she sends it out, she's like, "Here's when it is at this." I think Mountain Standard Time. 
And then here's a, a link to how you can figure out time in your time zone. Cause if you're like me, you've missed a dozen phone calls right. in the last year due to stupid. Not well, and we do have zones. people that log in right at the end of the hour and go, Oh, I thought it was starting right now. Yeah. So it is important to get those um, conversions, but she does send that stuff out. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll announce it in the discord as well. Yeah. So yeah. So um, mornings are going to be uh, me and will those are the, the even weeks evenings are going to be Lee and David, and those are going to be the odd weeks. And I want to add with, with um, scanners too. I'm an Epson guy. I like the printers. I like the scanners. Um, um, the, the scanning technology that Epson has, like whatever little receptor that they use, I feels like it's the same technology that they put in all their scanners. So when you're paying for a scanner, you're paying for, I guess, the size of all the extra stuff. So if you get like a copy, photocopy scanner printer combo, it still has that really nice receptor technology. So you're going to get beautiful scans, but it's just a small thing. So if you have a very large piece of artwork, you're going to have to like scan it in chunks and, and stitch it together. Um, I think they, the, the large format ones for the Epson, they know that the people who buy those are kind of serious about their, you know, they're using it professionally. So they charge a little more because they know they can, they can get it. So are, are we done? I think we got them all. Like that's all the questions in there. I don't and see it's anything. late in Ireland. So we don't want to keep you up late. <laughs> Patty O create. Those oh, of no, you who are create. <laughs> yeah, in the class, we're looking forward to seeing you in the Q and A's. Um, and I just want to say one, once again, and reiterate, don't feel bad if you can't make the Q and A it's, it's okay to take the class without it, but it is nice to have people there to ask questions. And sometimes there's follow-up questions. So, you know, you might put a question in the discord that we're answering, but that might generate a few more questions. And so it's nice to have people that are there live to ask those kinds of questions, those follow-up questions. Yep. I'm just responding to some of these in the chat. Um, all right, Gene, 7 a.m. there in Melbourne. Hope you have a good Friday and, uh, and, and it's nice weather and everything. Awesome. Oh, see you later. Love you. My wife's leaving to go officiate a swim meet. Oh, wow. So I, thought, I thought you were telling us that you loved us. My, I my love wife, you guys too, and everybody <laughs> in the chat, I love you as well. My wife Lots is of love. My, my wife is installing a brand new faucet upstairs right now. Oh, nice. So, yeah, what's your wife kitchen. doing, Lee? <laughs> She's uh building a fence backyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, I think anyway. we're done. <laughs> I just want to say, really. We're excited for this. If you can't tell, we like having fun. This yeah. is not a high pressure type of thing. We want to teach you. We want you to learn. And uh, and so we hope to see you next week in our first uh, Zoom session. And uh, and I think that's it. I'm going to call yeah. it call it good. All right. See you guys in class.